working together. It's how we've always reached our best ideas, but today we're doing it remotely and flexibly, making it harder for people to click. Enter wireless conferencing. You bring your own meeting on any laptop across any UC platform. Seamlessly share ideas, whether in a huddle space, boardroom, or not in the room at all. It's IT friendly, and all communications are secure. It's got everything you need to get teams collaborating more effectively. Click Share Conference. Great things happen when people click. John Andrews, Ted Rubin, welcome, welcome to an episode of Coffee in the Clouds. How you doing? Hello. I'm doing great, Tom. Thank you. I got to tell you, when you originally reached out to me, I grew up with a Tom Capone. So, really? And truth be told, you guys kind of look alike. Did he owe you money? <laughs> that, 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 that um, and and he has a podcast. He he him and another buddy of ours, Richie Woods, both graduated Oakside High, went to college, came back, and taught their entire careers at our high school. And they both also recently retired and then started like a uh, retired educator podcast. So when I when you first came in, I'm like, well, it's about damn time, time. <laughs> It wasn't him. <laughs> well, you know, when I was growing up, there were there weren't very many of us. Now it's like the you know the Capones are all over the place. So I don't know. Well, you grew up uh, down in Boca, right? You do. You went to Boca Town High School. I, I was born Florida. in Jersey, moved to Florida, went to went to school in Florida in Boca, and uh, now I'm back up here. So yeah, well, there were there were a bunch of Capones up up in New York. Very cool. Very cool. So listen. No, now we didn't, have any, we didn't have any Capones in my small town in the South where I grew up. Uh, <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> I bet you didn't have any Rubens either. Well, uh, not, not any Rubens. Nope. <laughs> Nope. Um, Uncle Al had bad press, but we'll just leave it right there. Okay. <laughs> we'll just we'll just move on from there. Um, but I gotta ask this question now twice. It's like, who are you and what do you do? Double. <laughs> who goes first? Well, I, I'll, I'll jump in. I mean, a little bit speaking for both of us, we're, we're, we're both um, content creators. We believe in the power of content and, and, and engagement and connecting with people um, as per our, we both love retail. John is really the retail geek of the two of us. I'm more of the engagement and relationship guy. Um, but uh, we've both just been in the marketing world for you know many, many years and have developed a lot of opinions. And right now we are creating content for ourselves, for some other companies. And uh, John will tell you a little bit more about it, but he's teaching four courses at his local college. So <laughs> that's pretty cool. And, and make sure he tells you about how he's learning all about statistics again I and am. telling me, dude, you know, statistics are pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, I, I don't know that I got much more to add to that. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a uh, lifetime marketer. Uh, who uh, became a uh, shopper marketer by, by career and interest. And, and I enjoy, I, I mean, to this day, I still love walking in a Walmart or a Walgreens or a, a, a you know, a boutique store and, and seeing what the, the merchants trying to tell me, because they're trying to tell you something mm -hmm. when you walk in. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I, lo I love that. And, and um, I get a little geeky about it. Ted, Ted knows. We he, last time he was here, we went over to uh, Bed Bath and Beyond and hung out in their massage chairs for a couple of hours. And uh, he says, "You know, we should get some beers and come in here and just hang out." You know? <laughs> and I'm like that would be pretty funny. But no, I I like that space. I love retail. Um, I think there's not a more exciting time to be in retail uh -huh. uh, than today. Uh, because uh, think about it is is the um, the simplicity at which we can do things today. I, I, don't, I don't have to go to a store, but if I want to go to a store, I can go to a store, yeah. or or I could do a, a combination. Like most, you know, a lot, there's all these arguments about oh, retail's dead, you know, whatever. It's not, or stores are dead. They're not, but they're but they're going to change, and they're going to have different functions that, that we had. I, I just think that's exciting. You know, other than CES in Vegas, the largest trade show that I would go to every single year would be the National Retail Federation show in New York City yeah. at Javits Center. And and I was enamored by it. I was like, wow, I recognize all these logos. And I'm like, well, Microsoft's here and Amazon's here and First Data. And I'm like, Okay. And it was, it was like an eye-opening experience, right? It was like, wow, 
Um, you know, this is everybody. Like, this is everything, you know? And as far as employment goes, right? I mean, most jobs have have the connection to retail in some capacity. Is that pretty much true? Yeah. Oh, well, you know, I think the point you're making, and it actually set off like a, a, a bell in my head, was because John and I went, went used to go to that event every year. And it's just interesting the way the, the, the names you mentioned, because of all the technology that was there. Yeah. Like this was the, you know, it sounds like the National Retail Association, like you're going to see all the retailers, but what you're really seeing is all the new tools that are that are available to retailers. And then it leads into what you just said, that so many of these software applications, these backend applications, these content building applications are being built for retail, whether it's retail in the store or it's e-commerce or it's live selling that John and I have just started talking about or kind of noticing that's starting to pick up a lot more. And uh, that's a really interesting point. I really, I never necessarily looked at it that way. Although most of the time when I was there, I was there be because a, um, a vendor who was trying to initiate something with retailers with a new tool, Wanted mm -hmm. me to be there to represent them, so it, it, I'm, it's just interesting that I never looked at it that way until you just said that. Mm, very good, mm. interesting. So you know, we are the distance learning association, but quite honestly, the brand has morphed. I mean, distance learning became digital learning. Well, well now it's just digital living, right? We cover everything: remote work, telemedicine, e-commerce, uh, the cloud. You know. Living, learning, working, playing, teaching, training, coaching, mentoring in the global cloud economy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Wow. Right. So retail, you know, over the last many years, like especially because of things like Amazon and companies like Shopify and big commerce and web websites, everything. I mean, the world flipped big time over the last 10 years. But then the pandemic, the pandemic changes everything. Right. Retail gets decimated, restaurants get decimated, Uber Eats happens, right? DoorDash happens, etc. What was going to happen in your world if the pandemic didn't happen? Where would you have been? What, what where would you be today if COVID didn't happen? What was on the what was on the radar? What was on the path? You know, pre-COVID. We'd, we'd probably be sitting in an office instead of not. Okay. Uh, number one. Um, our book probably wouldn't have gotten finished, uh, number two, because that was a really, that really drove us to get it done the way it accelerated everything we were talking about. It, it yeah. really allowed us to frame our book a little bit differently. And, and a lot of this was John's job because he, he had written a lot of the, the, the ideas of where retail was going. But when we originally started writing it, and we've been putting this together since 2017, a lot of what we we're talking about were things we were talking about that were going to happen in the future, which all, all of a sudden started happening because it, these things have always been available, but everybody was afraid of them. And now it got accelerated into it. And I, I just like to a little bit tweak what you said, like retail didn't get decimated. Retail got accelerated to change. Mm. Uh, retail actually went crazy. It went up. It, the stores got decimated or the companies that didn't have the capabilities of, of quickly moving. And I'd like to hand this off to John because he, we were just talking about, and he was talking about somewhere else about how, how prepared Walmart was for this, even though they were not prepared to do it so quickly. That was all mindset, but but they had been working with it. John, why don't you jump in and talk yeah, about Yeah, I, I think that's right. Uh, you know, people have been, retail was changing already, right? There, there's a, there, it, it, when COVID started, re shopper behaviors were changing, but they were changing slowly and slowly for a couple of reasons. One is, it still wasn't that easy to do alternative kind of shopping, especially if you're outside of large metro areas, you know. Uh, and then and, and retailers were dragging their feet about it, right? Because they're like, well, you know, um, I, I used to see people would say, you know, gosh, uh, uh, e-commerce and, and, uh, and online shopping is still only 10% mm. uh, uh, of of commerce, what, what, you know, what are we doing? And I'm like, well, what are you waiting for? Because it's not like it's going to be 9%. It's, you know, it's going to be 12%. It's going to be 15 And then COVID happened. And Walmart, it was an awesome article in March of, COVID was 2020 first year, right? Yeah. 
Uh, I always have to remind myself like <laughs> what year it was and what 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 happened, right? Uh, March of 2020, Walmart went from nine percent of its its shoppers uh, using uh, customer pickup and online order and, and digi- you know other digital sources to 30 percent. And all of a sudden, it's a new world, right? I mean, you, you think about the magnitude of that jump. Fortunately for Walmart, Walmart, the, pat, the two, three years before that had made a major push to turn on. It, it, it knew its, its shoppers didn't necessarily want to shop online. Some of them did, some of them did, but it's still a low number. But they did want to uh, order their groceries online and pick them up not go in the store because think about it, it you, you know I, I used to have a, i worked for walmart for a number of years and we used to have conversations and I, I remember we were working on this project to do um meal solutions so imagine on tuesday you've been working hard mom's gonna go to the store and she's gonna get all these wonderful meal solutions we're gonna have them ready for her and she's gonna take them and i'm like hey i don't know uh if any, if any of you people have families, but mom is not trying to sneak in an afternoon trip to, uh, you know, an after work trip from or picking up the kids from school or whatever and going to soccer and, and going to Walmart to get a meal solution. They, she has a solution for that. It's called a drive through window at McDonald's or, <laughs> or whatever. Right. You know, that ain't going to happen. But what mom really likes and dad, it is, you know, my, I've watched my wife transition to, to, uh, and she's like, Hey, you want to go to target? I'm like, I don't want to go. I don't need any. And I know now she means, do you want to go to target and pull into the little parking space and, and I'll hit the button on the, the tailgate uh, uh, on our, our car to go up and they'll put all our stuff in there and we'll close that and leave. I'm like, yeah, all right. Yeah, sure. I'll ride with you. <laughs> you know, whatever. It, it's just a behavioral change that made someone's life easier, mm-hmm. right? And, and I, I think there is this, you know, there was this long miss because people love going to stores. And, and I don't disagree with that. They probably don't love going, to, they love going to stores if you're entertaining them. And it's, it's, it's uh, Ted talks about this uh, North Face store that's in, in my mall all the time. It's got all their tents and all their stuff and whatever. Yeah, that's kind of fun. I don't, I don't love going to the store to get milk and bread and soup and you know perishables and whatever i mean i got it i got it yeah. you know i i usually get the same stuff you know t- this is not a productive part of my life make this easier for me you know mm. simplify the process mm. so you know i was born in 1960 and i remember you know there was a shopping mall built in wayne new jersey and at the time it was like one of the biggest mall- malls ever right yeah hamburger i mean it was like a big deal it was a big deal right now it's tiny in comparison but the whole mall experience right it was like it was like an event it was entertainment it was you went to it and and how many times people would go had no intention of buying anything but it was it was but you met your you met your friends there you hung out yeah right yeah you you know you you uh, a lot of malls had you know our mall at my, my little town had a movie theater right. and it had a, a ice cream store and it had a arcade like your centipede behind you and you know, whatever. Right, it, right, it, right. It, it, it was fun, you know, and, and I think we're going to, it's going to get more fun, right? Because there's going to be more and more stuff to do and more and more, you know, you, you see malls, especially reinventing themselves to, to have more of that. And, right. and, and to attract people. Yeah. And sometimes while you're there, you shop. You yeah. Know? Oh yeah. I need to go, or I need to go, you know why I go to the mall? Cause I got, I need to go to the Apple store and drop a device off or something to get it yeah, serviced. The only time I ever go. Apple and, store. And, but, but yeah, but I'm, I'm excited about it. Cause they're like, yeah, it's going to take two hours. I'm like, awesome. There's a, there's a, 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 a brewery pizza place in there. So I'm going to go get a pizza and, and a beer and I'm going to watch a little football. You know, I, I will schedule my Apple appointments around a game I want to watch. Right. right. <laughs> because I know that I'm going to go to that place right. and have a beer and wait on, you know, and I go get my computer or whatever. I'm, I'm good. I think a big part of the change is that the retail used to be the drawer to that, to that mall. It's no longer the drawer. 
Now it's other things. It's, I agree. It, it's going to be experiential experiences, whether those experiences are within a store, which they can be, like the North Face store, right. or more likely, they're going to be other things. They're going to be restaurants. I mean, again, for me, the only reason I go to any of these places really anymore, other than the Apple store, is, uh, is, is a restaurant. Yeah. And then as a circumstance or a happenstance is a better word, excuse me, for being at the restaurant is, oh, well, you know, I can just jump in over here to this store, get something over there or do something. And, you know, what's also changing and was happening before COVID and I, I don't think has really been affected that much by it. it. It's something that was progressing on its own is self-driving cars, is, is ride share services, where the parking lots, the use of the yeah. parking lots is going to change. Yeah, and there's just going to be and and big huge department stores. I think for the most part, are delivering items that are not like boutiques where you like to go through and oh my god, that's a nice shirt. Department stores are more of a destination. I need something, I go there, I get it. I walk a few other aisles, get a few more things while I'm here, and it's why a lot of them are disappearing because that's easy to do online. I mean, Amazon's making Amazon and other companies now are making that experience easy, and they're and they're simplifying it even. It's 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 not only it's not only that they're making it easier, it's a much simpler process than going to a store. Well, you know, the word store even, like has the definition of store changed? I mean, when I say, I think grocery store, shoe store, but then you just said Apple store, like, oh, like, okay, like that's for Apple, right? Where the shoe store used to be for everybody's shoes, you know? I mean, I'm just curious, like it, feel, it feels like, I don't know if that word works anymore. Store. What I would, think? John. You, your daughter's a little younger than mine, but she's probably getting a little older for this. But I would bet you younger kids today don't even know what that word means. Yeah. Yeah. I. You know, and, and she doesn't. She doesn't really. It, it, it's funny you say that, Ted, because it's exactly what was my first thought. She doesn't think about a store as a place. Right. Yeah. Right. And, 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 I, and I actually, it's one of the themes of the book. So uh, uh, thanks for the softball there, Tom. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's, uh, it, you know, a, a store is, a retail is, a, is now a, a uh, it's not a state of mind, but it's an activity. I, I saw a great uh, graphic uh, with a company I'm, I'm starting to do some work with today. I was on a presentation with them. The average consumer spends 17 minutes of their day shopping, right? So mm -hmm. think about that. And that, that, so that includes the time you actually go to a store and you're spending an hour or some days or more and you're spending no time some days, but, but actively active shopping, you know, you, you, you're spending a time passively shopping. You actually spend a lot of time. You're thinking about, Oh, I just, I, I saw this, this, uh, I saw this ad for this, this cool thing I wanted or, or, Oh, uh, you know, Oreos has a new, uh, you know, uh, the Pop Rocks flavor Oreos. I don't know if you ever had those, but they're pretty awesome. Uh, <laughs> Ted's like, yeah. But, but, but you know, what, whatever. But that's, that's passively shopping because that's, that's what we spend all this ad dollars and all these things doing, try to get you to think about. It. We're still in this mode, though, where we were on these routines based on a physical store, right? Mm -hmm. So, so that's why the circular came out in the paper, because most of us went to the store on, on the weekend to do a, 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 a stock up trip, right? Get right. all our groceries for the week. And then we might go midweek and do a fill in trip. Oh, I need milk or I'm going to make this recipe or whatever. Now, you, you know, with, with, with changing modalities, the, the store is anywhere I am, any, any place I am, or anything that I'm doing, but just talking with, with, you know, my wife about a habit that we have about, you know, we'll go out and have a, a, a great bottle of wine. And a lot of people probably do this. We take a picture of it. Right. Mm, yeah. And, I, yeah. and so that, that's my, that's my, that's my thing. I'm taking a picture of this bottle of wine. Well, it's not going to be long before that bottle of wine, when I take a picture of it or however, I point my phone at it. It's going to it, it is it is going to show up at my house, right? Right. And, and and by the way, everything we need to do to do that we have already. And and even even to Ted's point, it, you'll you'll take the humans completely out of that equation because a, a little one of the little sidewalk robots will bring it over to my house from my Harris tier. You know, 
And, or, uh, or finally, a drone will drop that coffee while I'm driving right into my hand, which will be wonderful. I, I, whatever, right? I mean, you, you know, but, but it changes our whole um, interaction with this thing we call retail. It also changes the definition of what a retailer is. I, I don't know if there was a great article today. Walmart just bought two um, uh, fintech companies, mm -hmm. right? And one of the things we talk about in the book is is the you know the future of retail is is the seamless integration of product, content, and payment, right? Mm -hmm. and, and and once you once you think about combining and so Walmart's totally thinking about this, right? Because it has you know when I worked at Walmart, I don't know what the number is today. A third of its customers were unbanked, right? So they didn't have a bank account. Uh, but may have had a credit card, but probably not. Might have had a credit card, whatever. But right. they're on bank. Well, that's a lot of people who still need to buy stuff, right. right? So if in the Walmart app, I could have crypto or pay, well, pay does, by the way, does it matter? People think too much about, oh, people aren't going to buy stuff with crypto. Sure, some people will, but, but who cares? If they right. want to, you should let them, right? Do yeah. you, you care if you get your money? So, so I, I think that you're going to see this, this idea of thinking about retail as a place uh, shift to thinking about retail as, a, as an action. Mm -hmm. So pre-COVID, right, a couple of years ago, uh, certainly before COVID, um, the, top, the conversations with things like, like Amazon is evil. And Amazon is and Amazon's going to ruin Main Street and Amazon crushes, you know, the little guy, et cetera. And then COVID happened. And then all of a sudden it's like, my God, thank God for Amazon too, right? Amazon like, saved our lives. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, what, what do we do without it? And then Amazon Prime happened too, right? Where it's like, oh my God, right? Uh, you're going to pay for what? To get faster delivery? I, autom I mean, I don't even think twice about it. It's like we have had... I would never cancel Amazon Prime. It's just, you just, it's just, it's in there, right? What are the things that happened that did not happen, you know, for Sears or, you know, the ones that missed the boat? Um, Best Buy had a turnaround, right? I mean, I actually interviewed Yobert Jolie from, uh, from Best Buy, right? That was mm -hmm. a cool interview. Um, but it's like hindsight's 2020, right? I mean, like what? Like what? What would the time machine answer be? Right? What? How? What would? What would we have said if we if we had the time machine to go back to Sears? Let's say, like, how did how did Sears lose it? Right? Here's my question. I, I John probably has a little more direct insight into this, but I, they didn't invest in the future. I mean, Walmart, although they were might might have been at, at at a lot of points pushing back on Amazon and what they were building. Behind the scenes, they were building the same thing, yeah, and, and they, were. they were preparing because they were they were holding their finger in the dam as long as they could because it benefited them. So why not? If the if the cost of the finger in the dam was less than what the money it was bringing in, keep the finger in the dam, but prepare. Whereas the Sears of the world, the Macy's of the world, they they were not. They were putting the finger in the dam or totally ignoring the leak. Yeah. Uh, when it comes yeah. to a, like Sears or even, you know, you look at Eddie Lampert, what was he doing? He was really just banking on the real estate. So he, I, I think for him. Oh, was, that was he, totally an arbitrage. Yeah. yeah you yeah. know, the longer he could keep the retail supporting the real estate, the more value got added to the real estate. And, and, and he made his play that way. So I don't think he ever had an intention of trying to be where they were. I think he was making the best of a bad situation and looking at what other money he could make in another way. And I'm sure, a, I don't know enough about it. That's one that's been written about a lot. And, and John and I had some dealings with Sears, so we learned, but um, I'm sure there were other retailers that were doing the same thing. Right. I mean, I, I, I don't know what's going on, but like I look at Dick's and I know they've turned around a little bit, but they still have not done anything they should be really doing to survive in the long term future. Maybe they started doing during COVID because it was a slap in the face and they had enough money to buy them over until they had time to do it. But, you know, most of my experiences, again, these are pre-COVID because I'm not out there shopping a lot now. Right. But anytime I wanted to do a Dick's, if they didn't have something I wanted, they just shrugged their shoulders and sent me on my way. Even when I pushed back and said, well, can you go and see if the store in the next town has it? No, you'll have to go over there and check it out. Yeah. Or is there anything else like what I'm asking for? Nah, I don't think so. Like I, I, they weren't hiring people. They were cutting back where they had to. So I, I think 
what happened with a lot of retail is like with a lot of businesses, um, they cut back where they could to survive instead of investing for the future and recognizing that the change was coming and that was the only way. And I, I want to jump back to something else you said when you mm -hmm. said about how Amazon crushed small business. I, I think Amazon did a big job of crushing a lot of local small business, yeah. the ones that were that were brick and mortar. I think Amazon opened the door for digital small business. And I don't just mean with their platforms or their cloud. I mean with their learnings and with what they've built. So I, I deal with a lot of small startups now where I buy, I mean, they're getting bigger, where I buy vegan, I buy vegan um, meals. I buy uh, an additive to uh, for working out to a drink. I buy a protein powder, but all these things I buy, um, I buy from small, it's like the only stuff I don't buy from Amazon. And the right. reason I work with these vendors is they're giving me a lot of what Amazon does. They alert me mm. when, I'm, when I'm due for a new order. They, they eat, make it incredibly simple for me to put it off because I have too much in my refrigerator already. I don't have to go and find it and pull something down. I click on a button, it automatically takes me in to, to, my, to my, uh, my account. And I just click a button that says delay delivery for two weeks. And I think Amazon opened the door for those people. I think they're the ones that developed a lot of the technology or at least financed a lot of these companies, you know, desire to build it, the, the back end companies, the vendors. And it made it possible for a lot of these small companies to build what they've built. Was, now, but was that a behavioral change? What you just described, was that something where you noticeably have changed the way you were going to buy something, you were going to interact with something or... No, like, 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 was it, was it just normal? Like, like, how, how do you describe it? It was a behavioral change that Amazon gave me. Ah. They, they actually allowed it because it was something that was very natural. They, they made it e easier for me to do. Uh, and there's my doorbell ring. Um, <laughs> and uh, my, my ring, of course, telling me. Probably an Amazon delivery. That my, I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's an Amazon delivery. Um, they enabled me to do it. But then what they did was they made me, they, they changed my behavior so that I looked for it from others and others that couldn't provide it to me, I wasn't willing to do business yeah. with. But now others have learned from Amazon. They've watched that behavior. And, and, and that comes to all about, John and I always tell marketers, instead of complaining, watch what your shoppers are doing. Watch what your kids are doing. Watch how your wife shops. That's where you're going to learn about how other people do it. Mm -hmm. And um, I think they watched Amazon. They realized what was working. Some people, instead of just saying, oh man, Amazon's killing small business, they said, what can we do like them with some of those tools so that Ted will be willing to buy from me because I don't want to sell my product through Amazon. Right. And those are, the, those are the people that I, and I'm sure that's what's empowered a lot of them to grow because people have jumped over saying, wow, they're making it easy for me. John and I like to say that simplicity is the new everyday low pricer. It's mm. a new EDLP that Walmart made famous. You, you know, make it easy for them and they'll buy from you again and again and again. Mm. So is, is retail still the right word? When we talk about Shopify, when we talk about big commerce, when we talk about walmart.com, when we talk about brick and mortar versus non-brick and mortar, um, when we talk about DoorDash and Uber Eats, or, I mean, is it, oh no, that's that's not it. Or, or is it all now this amorphous cloud, <laughs> you know, all under one umbrella now? John, so, so yeah, yeah. So here's the problem with the word retail in, in my mind and, and uh, is, Retail is a word that focuses on the person providing the service, right? Yeah. So Walmart is a retail is about a store or about e-com or whatever. We, I think we're in an, in an age of shopper enablement. It, the, the focus should never be on the, the supplier, the, the supplier, the vendor. The focus is on the shopper, right? Yeah. And, and I think that's where people get lost it is, is retail is focusing on those folks providing a service versus, I think, thinking about what do shoppers want to do? You're right. DoorDash, at, uh, Uber. You know, think about think about what Uber did. You know, uh, um, you know, Uber really it, it, was, it was interesting between them and Lyft saying um, uh, Lyft is like, now nah, we're just going to give people rides. Well, that kind of was, was not fun in COVID for a while, but, but Uber said, no, we're going to 
bring people stuff. We're going to fulfill part of the shopper enablement process mm -hmm. and, and, did, and did pretty well. And I think, go back, you know, back to your example, we talk about the history of retail in the, in the first chapter of the book. Sears was delivering what people needed. People in, in you know, out in the, the beyond the cities couldn't get stuff that you yeah. could get in cities. And, and think about the Sears catalog and, 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 and you know, increasingly they, they put little stages to service the catalog business in, in local places. I remember our little Sears store was nothing more than really a, a catalog fulfillment right. center, right? There was some little stuff, but it wasn't a big Sears store. I lived in a little tiny town. They adapted to the shopper behavior of the time. Mm. Right. And what you said earlier, oh, Amazon's killing small business. Do you, do you remember when Walmart killed all Main Street? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That was the bully then. That was the bully. But, the, but, yeah. the, but, the, but it wasn't, it wasn't a bully. It was the, it was the fact that if you, if you didn't have a Walmart in your town, you paid a lot more for stuff. Yeah. Right. And so that was just, that was a shopper saying, yeah, I like paying less money for stuff. I yeah. mean, that wasn't, it wasn't Walmart. Walmart was fulfilling a shopper need. And I think to, to, to Ted's point, you know, Sears didn't, didn't really capture that, that, that change. And then as you, as you moved in, as now, as you moved into, move into a shopper enablement time, um, you, you know, there are people who are adapting to that. I, I love the fact that if you are a, a small uh, brick and mortar business in, in a, you know, in a, in a, a town like Raleigh or something, and, and you can, you, you could double, triple, quadruple your business by, by using Amazon or by yeah. using Shopify or by, you, you know, you, you can not, now your business is not the, the, the traffic that drives by your intersection or the people, you know, it, it, it could be anyone. And you, you see people adapting to fulfilling those needs that people want. And that we, we say that straight out in the beginning of the book. Retail is, is fulfilling needs. It's not a place. So by the end of this year, we're probably going to be way above 10 million members. And I wish I could take more personal credit for it. But a lot of it has to do with COVID and the pandemic, right? I mean, other than Zoom, I don't know who could grow more in a pandemic than, than the Distance Learning Association, yeah? Yeah, okay. yeah. It would be wonderful if all 10 million of our members go to the website, click on the link below here and buy your book. That would be cool. That would be cool, right? Okay, but that's probably not going to happen. The question is, who should get it? Who, who is going to benefit the most from your book? In 60 seconds or less. Dead? No, John, that's yours, buddy. <laughs> oh, that's me. Well, I, you know, I think anybody in in the in the brand, uh, in the retailer world, in, in the any in, and by the way, that's a lot of that's a lot of people, right? And and in the media and marketing space, you know, we think about we we think about how do those things come together? And you you were right. We talked about this at the beginning. How much of of marketing? And all of the things we do are wrapped up in into to, to retailing and yeah. to fulfilling shopper needs a lot, right? We're a consumer economy. It's what we do, right? You know, right. We, we, we buy stuff. And, and so, you know, anybody involved with, with enabling shoppers to, to get, the, you know, to fulfill needs uh, more seamlessly and with less friction should read this book. Cool. And, and, and just to, to add to that, for that, I want to bring you back to something John said earlier, um, PCP, products, content, and payments. I mean, that's relevant to so many different people. And it's not just about what we look at, quote unquote, as retail. I, I mean, a perfect example is John and I have a really good friend. He's like a little brother to me. He, uh, his name is Daniel Small. He is now um, the director of operations for a small restaurant group. And they have they also have a commissary they deliver to the airports. Um, and uh, the gentleman who started the company also during COVID started a vending machine business with with healthy, um, um, organic you know, natural food meals. And when I came down to see him last day, I was like, dude, you got to bring your book for, for, for the owner of my company. Like, you know, and the guy has now thanked me three times. Yeah. 
And and he his main business is is restaurant is the restaurant business and his commissary business, which is not a direct to consumer retail business. Yes, he's looking to build this other one, but he's just like this is so relevant to everything I'm doing, and and I wish I had him I had him him here to 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 give us that boost. But um, I know I've heard it, and I I was going back down there last week, and Danny asked me to bring my other three books cool. um, for his boss because he had requested them. So um, I think that just shows you that it it, it really. Again, for anybody that's in business, that's in retail, that that's even someone who's selling software, I think it's relevant. Well, guys, I could talk to you guys all day long, but I can't. But I can, but I can't. Right? <laughs> but we, we will have links to your website. We're going to have links to your book. We're going to make it very easy for our community to get your book and put it to good use. Um, maybe we could touch base again in a couple of months, right? And, and uh, just, just see, see how things are going in the world. But uh, yeah, retail makes the world go round. And I guess those who ignore it are going to do so at their own peril. Yeah. No, absolutely. So. And I got to tell you, John and I love doing these things. So we'd love to circle back. Cool. Sure. Guys. Absolutely. And this thank was, you for the opportunity. Appreciate it. This was another session of Coffee in the Clouds. Take care. This video was brought to you by...